I'm going to use Laplace transforms here to solve a pair of simultaneous first order constant coefficient ODEs with boundary conditions. In the process of doing this you will need to be familiar with Kramer's rule for solving simultaneous equations. If you're not familiar with that rule I suggest you read up on it or maybe look at a maths cast on the subject. The two equations that I plan to solve are given here along with the appropriate bounded conditions. Remember the advantage of the Laplace transform is that it incorporates boundary conditions immediately without you having to substitute them at the end. Let's get started. I'm going to use the usual notation. Capital Y will be the transform of little y and capital X will be the transform of little x. I will also need the result for the derivative. I've called it x dot here. Remember dot usually means time derivative. That's the result for x dot and I'll use the analogous result also for y dot. I won't write that one out here. It looks just the same with y's instead. OK, let's get started. We're going to have to take the Laplace transforms of both the differential equations. So we're going to get S capital Y minus Y of 0. That's the Laplace transform of dy dt. Then 3 and now S capital X minus X of 0. That's the dx dt. And on the right hand side there's a Y, so we'll need another capital Y. Let's call that one number 1. Then for number 2 we'll need again S Y minus Y of 0 minus 2 into S X minus X of 0 and on the right hand side the Laplace transform of 1 is just 1 over S. Let's call that one number 2. Now there's one convenient substitution we can do immediately and that's that x of 0 is 0. So let's get rid of those two terms involving x of 0. So I'm now going to collect all of the Laplace transform objects, capital X and capital Y, on the left hand side and everything else on the right. I'm also going to substitute little y of 0 equals 1 as I go. OK, so equation number 1, well we've got an SY already on the left, but there's also the Y on the right hand side. Let's take that over. So that'll be S minus 1 times capital Y. And well, let's tick them off as we go, shall we? That's that one and that one. And now I'm about, about to write out also the 3SX, so I'll tick that one off. And on the right hand side, there'll just be the y of 0 term to go over. Remember that was 1, so we'll have equals 1 on the right. And that's ticked off. Let's call that one equation 3. That's what number 1 has become. And now we'll deal with number 2. Again, there's an sy. But actually, there's only sy, isn't it? So we don't need brackets. Just S capital Y, that's that term. And there's a minus 2S capital X, that's that term. And on the right hand side, there's already a 1 over S, that's that term. But there's also a Y of 0 to take over. So that'll make a plus 1 again on the right. And we'll call that equation 4. And I think while we're at it, we'll rewrite that right-hand side as here we go, that's actually S plus 1 over S. So in fact, I'll call equation 4 that equation there with that right-hand side written that way over one denominator. OK, there's a pair now of simultaneous linear equations for capital X and capital Y. All the derivatives have gone, and we've just got to solve simultaneous equations. I'm going to use Kramer's rule to do that. So, if you remember Kramer's rule, you'll remember that it involves three determinants. 
In the case of two variables, as we have here, they will be two by two determinants. They're usually called delta, delta one and delta two. I'm going to write all three of them out now. First of all, delta. It's the determinant whose entries are just the coefficients of capital Y and capital X from the left-hand side of the simultaneous equations. That's S minus 1, 3S, S and negative 2S. I've also evaluated that determinant. There's a step that I've skipped there, but I'll leave you to check that on paper. It turns out that the answer factorizes in the way that I've shown here. Let's move on and do delta 1. For delta 1, we leave the second column of delta exactly as it was before. But in the first column, we put the two entries from the right-hand side of our equations 3 and 4. So in the first column, we replace what was there before with now 1 and s plus 1 over s from the right-hand sides of the simultaneous equations. An analogous procedure for delta 2 puts that same column now in the second column position and leaves the s minus 1 and s intact. I'll write that out straight away. And you'll notice that I'm simplifying as I go. You'll need to check these on paper if you, if you, if you want to be sure. OK, so there's delta 2. You see the first column is now the same as delta, but the second column has been replaced. I've expanded that determinant and it simplifies to negative 1 over s. So now we can write down the solution for the simultaneous equations for x and y. Now, we must be careful not to get confused here. Remember, the y was the thing associated with the first column. That's a bit unusual. It's the wrong way round, really, isn't it? But as long as we just remember that, it was y that was first and x was second. So now we can write our solutions that y of s must be delta 1 over delta. So that's minus 3 minus 5s over, and delta was, there it is, 2 minus 5s times s. And at the same time, x is the delta 2 over delta. That's minus 1 over s, but I'll put the s underneath. And delta is 2 minus 5s, and it has another s, so that's altogether an s squared underneath for the x. OK, so we've got our Laplace transforms, capital X and capital S. What we now have to do is partial fractions. Let's start with x. So for, for x, we have minus 1 over s squared to 2 minus 5s must be the same as a over s, sorry, that should be an equals, shouldn't it? There we go. Equals a over s, and a b over s squared term, and a c over 2 minus 5s. Now, if I do all the partial fractions and go through all the work here, this math class will get rather long. So I'm going to leave it to you to work out what these coefficients must be. It's a standard exercise in partial fractions. You should find the following. OK, so there are the results for a, b, and c. So now let's put these back in. So our x of s must be a over s. That's minus 5 over 4 times 1 over s. Plus b, that's minus a half times 1 over s squared. And for the c, I'm going to reverse the order. Instead of 2 minus 5s on the bottom, I'm going to have 5s minus 2. That's because we usually have the positive coefficient of s. But because I've reversed the order, that means I must change the sign of c. So that'll be plus 25 over 4 times 1 over 5s minus 2. OK, we're now ready to take the inverse transforms for the first two terms. But for the last term, I'm going to go further and rewrite that by pulling a factor of 5 out on the bottom. So I've got 1 over 5, and then I've got s minus something. And the something is 2 fifths. And then that 5 on the bottom will cancel with 25 on top and just leave a 5. So altogether that term is now 5 over 4. 
times 1 over s minus 2 fifths. So now I'm ready to write down my solution for x. So take inverse transform, we get x of t must be. So for 1 over s, that's the transform of the constant 1, so just minus 5 over 4, which is the coefficient. 1 over s squared, its inverse transform is t, so minus a half t, and then plus 5 over 4, and the last term will be an exponential with 2t over 5. This is a good place to do a check on x of 0, because if we've made a mistake here, the chances are that y won't come out right as well, so there'd be little point wasting our time on it. Before doing the y transform, let's check x of 0. x of 0 is minus 5 over 4, minus 0 plus 5 over 4, and that certainly comes out to zero. So that doesn't tell us definitely that we've done everything right, but it's certainly an indi indication that we seem to be on the right track. So that check works for x. Okay, now we have to go back and do the same stuff for the y. Delta 1 over delta, and that we had as minus 3 minus 5s over 2 minus 5s and s. Now that 2 minus 5s, we didn't really like that order, did we? So why don't we reverse it immediately by multiplying top and bottom by negative 1? That'll have the advantage of getting rid of the minuses on top as well. So actually y of s is 3 plus 5s over 5s minus 2 times s. Let's write that out. There it is, and I've also put in the partial fraction straight away. I'll tell you the results again for this one. Here are the a and b. There are the results. OK, so we're now ready to write out the y of s and take the inverse transform. Let's do that. y of s is equal to minus 3 halves times 1 over s plus 25 over 2, 1 over 2, 5s minus 2. I see I haven't corrected it everywhere though, so let's do that. OK, that's better. I'm just being a little bit too hasty there. So now, once again, that last term will need to pull out a factor of 5. So 25 over 2 and 1 over 5 into s minus 2 fifths, just like we did in the x case. And so taking inverse transforms gives us y of t. 1 over s just gives us a constant, which is minus 3 halves and then plus 25 over 2, and the 5 must cancel on top, so that'll just make 5 over 2, and e to the 2 fifths t. I think you can see easily enough that y of 0 does come out to be 1, so that check is very simple and it seems to be OK. And as usual, I'll leave you to check the, the actual differential equations so check the D's.